What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire, the man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We are going to be talking through Wednesday's uh, MLB slate. I actually somehow had a decent night. I actually looked and I finished like 11th in the 88, and I actually ended up profiting some when I thought it was. I was going to bed thinking it was losing. I guess it's because the Angels and Royals game went a little wild, and I was pretty high on both those teams. Got a lot of things right yesterday, so a couple of profitable days in a row we will take, even though it's not the ideal situation. It's not not nothing huge like what Rody just hit, but. Uh, Sheets, how did you do? And uh, what are your thoughts about this tonight's slate? I did well with the Angels um, and uh, KC to some extent, um, but uh, had a little bit too much strider. I, I made like a little bit of money on the night in total. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, a, I mean, it was just one of those, it was kind of a weird night. And I wish I would have stuck more with my C's take because I, I did say, I mean, I went from like 35% yeah. of them to about 20% of them, which that would have been really, really nice to, to get that one through because that was uh, obviously the nuts. And sometimes you just have to play the best, the, the best strikeout, the best fantasy players in the, in the worst matchups on, on even on those tough slates. So, all right, Sheets. So let's get into tonight's one. Um, why don't we pull up your screen and we will go game by game here. Just pause for just one second. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, no problem. Oh yeah. We were just, uh, we're going to go game by game here. Um, <laughs> And uh, we get started with Washington, Baltimore here. It's uh, sheets. I don't know what to do with this game exactly. Um, well, the good news is it's probably not going to play. Okay, that's that. I'm, that's that's sort of what I'm what I'm thinking a little bit as well. Um, well, let's see. I mean, yeah, it's pretty pretty rough out there. Um, but I, if, it, I, if it does play, I have Baltimore. Baltimore's my top overall stack, so we'll see what happens. Well, I, I was gonna, you know, I was gonna be really into both sides of this, but the problem is, I, I don't. I'm looking at it now, and and I I, th I was I was assuming the ownership was going to be a little bit higher, but it's early day projections, and it might be factored in because of the weather a little bit, so maybe that's why. Um, but yeah, it certainly does seem like a rough weather game. At the same time, I I don't know. Just I, I, let's just I guess that if I was to play it, I think that I would be interested in in both set both offenses here. Um, it would be let's see what the temperature is right now in Baltimore. Um, Sorry about that. Uh, 75. It's not, it's not like an ideal hitting weather anyway, but I, I definitely have interest specifically in the Baltimore side, just with how bad Corbin's been and how much power he's allowed. And uh, Baltimore has been pretty pesky. So I, I wouldn't mind. Uh, I wouldn't mind that. And you, you wouldn't play any, either of these pitchers, right? Nope. Okay. So let's move on and talk about Chicago and Pittsburgh. Um, all right, Sheets, I'll let you start off on this one. Yeah, you know, it seems as though I've been playing for DFS for a couple of years now with baseball. Mm -hmm. And for like three years, I didn't even realize that, that the Pirates kind of existed. You know, like, I, I would never be a pitcher I would play. Mm -hmm. I think like Musgrove, maybe when he was there, I'd play him for every once in a while. But I would never play the hitters. Um, and then all of a sudden, it seems as though this year, I mean especially I guess in the last week or so, I mean, they've been, they've been showing up everywhere. You know what I mean? They've been mm -hmm. showing up and yeah, you've got this Contreras guy that we can, we keep playing, we play. We have all these, all these, all these value plays for Pittsburgh showing up from time to time. And it feels as though every day now I'm just from where we're talking about Pittsburgh. Um, so uh, let's, let's get after it. Um, once again, I have Pittsburgh is rated a uh, very uh, strong value as far as a stack uh, option goes after Baltimore, I have them as the top. And then, I mean, this is kind of gruesome, but I have this Eichhoff character as being a totally legitimate SP2 if you want to do it um, or if you need to do it or something like that. Um, I'll have to dive in a little further because I don't know how much they're going to use him. Isn't he, isn't he maybe I don't know either. Pitch a couple innings? Let's see. Like, what, did he, what has he done before? He hasn't done I anything. Don't know. Nothing. So I, I don't know what they're going to do with him. I, I, I personally am on the other side of this. I like the Keegan well, Thompson. Well, that was, well, that was the other thing is yeah. that I also have the Cubs rated as like my fourth best overall stack on the day. So, mm -hmm. um, so uh, who would have thought, man, these games in Pittsburgh, like it's going to be like big targets. I don't know. So I do like the Cubs uh, more than I like Icoff. Let's put it that way. And uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah. The value for Pittsburgh is, is still there. Um, Obviously, they're the Sawinski at 2.2. They did make Cruz up to 2.7 now, who is just a hard guy not to play because if he gets on, he's going to run. And uh, he sort of seems like he sparked a little life into these guys, and they just are really cheap. So if you're, I like Thompson, and I like if I'm not playing Thompson, I don't mind uh, taking a shot with a Pittsburgh stack. I, I am open to the to the Cubs, although I like them a little bit less just because they're a little more expensive. I do think Contreras is, stands out as as a terrific 
play every night basically, but uh, probably the best hitting catcher in baseball and uh, is always in play. But I, I definitely could see going uh, with, with Thompson and I could see going with Pittsburgh in my first look today. And we get all these, these Yankee and, uh, and, and Tampa Bay games and the totals are, are always like seven or seven and a half or six and a half. It's, it's so funny to see. Um, I think this Baz kid is good. I, I personally feel like I'm probably staying away from this. I think Montgomery is in play, but I, I'm not like excited to play Montgomery, but he's been really good lately. Um, the Rays have some weaknesses. They definitely do. But then you go out last night and you get three home runs out of a guy who basically never hits a home run in Paredes. Um, that was crazy. Uh, three home runs his first three at bats, I believe too, which screwed my Cortez lineups up. But uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm not very interested in this game overall. I do think Montgomery is a, is a, a logical play. I think he's going to get some ownership. I thought Thompson was a re reasonable pivot off of him at much lower ownership, but uh, that's pretty much all I've got for this one. How about you shoots? Yeah. Um, I have Montgomery as kind of a secondary uh, pitching option um, for, I mean, I, there, I think I think there's kind of a chalk pairing, which we'll get to later. I suppose that that's going to be not obviously tough to get away from, but but it's going to seem to make a lot of, you know a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you don't want to play those guys, I think that Montgomery certainly a reasonable secondary option. And um, you know Tampa's lineup certainly hasn't gotten better in the last day. Um, and uh, I think Montgomery's totally reasonable. Uh, I don't know anything about Shane Baz, but I don't really feel like playing anybody against the Yankees right now. Um, and, and yet, uh, the Yankees are not really showing up for me at all. So for me, uh, just maybe a little bit of Montgomery and that's it. Yeah. I, I, I have no problem taking pictures against the Yankees personally. Um, I think Baz has got good stuff. So I, I don't mind if you're, if you're mixing him in, um, he's also got a, you know, he's got a higher K prop than anybody we've talked about so far. Uh, he's got good strikeout stuff. So I, I, I think there's talent there, but yeah, here's, here's, um, we're going to get into some other ones and I, and I know this is not the one you're talking about, but I am flirting with the idea going on to this Boston Detroit game that I understand he's had two bad starts in a row. I still believe in Scooble's talent and he is definitely a guy I would, wouldn't mind getting off the board with on a small slate. Uh, at the same time, I, I personally have interest in mild interest in Detroit just for some of the value plays. Um, and Waka is like, you know, he's been fine enough. Um, I just think the Detroit value is, is up there for is, is, is one of the things for me. So Pittsburgh and Detroit are my two value stacks, nothing new there. You've got some really cheap options and they're playing in Fenway. So that's a nice, uh, nice thing, but uh, that's, that's pretty much all I have here. How about you? Yeah. So uh, once again, Detroit is showing up as a value uh, stack as, as it's been doing for a while now. Mm -hmm. um, Waka's he's, he's, he's sneaky. I don't know, man. He's 6,800. Mm -hmm. um you know he is against Detroit and um I'm not I'm not dismissing him as 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 an option um I, I like someone better pretty much the same price but um yeah but I like uh but I think he, I think walk is totally reasonable here um and 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 like you said I mean Detroit is showing up as as, as good value um I think again the the discussion is whether you want to play Boston and now now Boston but now Boston is actually against a good pitcher you know he's been he's been you yeah. know, playing and uh, they're still going to get owned too <laughs> and 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 they're still going to get owned as a matter of fact with when Baltimore drops off the list for me Boston does show up as the top stack overall for me um, not not considering value or anything like that which yeah. means it's probably they're probably going to get ownership I, I don't think I need to do that against Scuba I think he's good enough to keep me off of Boston if in fact as you said they're going to be somewhat owned so. Um, I'm probably going to stay off of the Boston side of this, and I, Walk is just such a such a great pivot. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna think about that one. The only hard problem with Waga is he literally can't strike anybody out. Nobody. So he has to <laughs> he has to have like a you know a seven inning, one run, four hit kind of a game, and then three strikeouts or something to get there. It's just yeah. It, but I mean, to have a really big outing, he could do other things. I think that, I mean, I think one of the better bets and I'm not going to necessarily, cause I, I do have to go today. Um, I'm not necessarily going to be able to get all my stuff up on the site. Um, but I do want to say that I think, I think Scooble at five and a half strike as a five and a half K prop is completely awesome as a, as a bet. <laughs> I, I love the five and a half K prop for a guy who averages about seven and a half or eight, close to eight. Um, 
So I, I'm, I'm high on that. I, I'm not going to, as good as Boston is, I'm not, I'm not going to just completely ignore that Scooble has really good stuff. So, all right. Um, you got it. Go ahead. No, no, you, you, now no I was going to say this next game, it seems to be both San Francisco and Atlanta always, always seem to be in that kind of fantasy um, purgatory that they always throw out a pitcher that's, that's, that's good. That's good enough to keep me off the other hitter. And they're always good enough as a hitting team to keep me off the other pitcher. And I think this, this matchup kind of tests that theory, you know, because mm -hmm. let's, let's talk with more about, I guess, Rodon first. I mean, there's no disputing Rodon's upside, right? right. Um, there's also no disputing that Atlanta is really good, you know? So, so uh, I myself, I'm not going to go to Rodon, but I'm certainly not going to talk anybody off of it. Um, and, and Morton likewise on the other side, I mean, he's been, He's been, um, you know, he's had some good games, had some not some good games, and San Francisco is is good, not great, you know. And and I'll tell you what this what these plays remind me of. It's a little different, but it reminds me of your of your cease play from yesterday. You know, like it's mm -hmm. it's uh, he wasn't like the highest owned. He certainly has upside, and five yeah, percent owned. Kept his ownership down was 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 the matchup, you know. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it just doesn't matter. <laughs> um, yeah, when you have the number one pitcher in baseball at 5% ownership, the only problem with this game is you got two – I mean, Morton's bounced back and looked great and word on, but the problem is they – they, they, these, these guys aren't quite the same level and they don't have, they have, we have, as of right now, I have showing an extreme hitters umpire okay. in the, and it's 95 degrees out there. So it's a little worrisome for me. I mean, look at the total. I mean, Atlanta's run total is near five against Rodon. That seems almost crazy, but right. look what they just did last night. And, and that was my other weird one was that I, I think that I, and I wish I would have gone with it more was I said it on live as like, you know, if you're going to make the, 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 the lineup that no one's going to play. And it was weird because a lot of their pinch hitters got there. But the Giants were one of my favorites, and they just went completely nuts. Um, I, it's 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 a very strange game. This one, it feels like a great hitting game, a great hitting environment. But you got two really good pitchers who are good strikeout pitchers on the mound. So I, I don't know exactly what to do. What, do you, what do you, are you going to play the hitting in this? No, I'm okay. probably going to get be be off the whole thing. Except I might I might I might I might listen to myself and I might play Rodon actually. Yeah, I have him in the mix right now. I'll say my favorites at the end of this one, but I, I definitely, I mean, he's definitely in the mix for me. It's just Atlanta strikes out enough. It's, it's okay, but it's, uh, it is a little worrisome, especially with that heat out there. All right. Cleveland, Minnesota. What have you got over here? I, it's funny. I, I didn't really see much of the pitchers here. Um, I did get to Minnesota actually as somebody as a team worth playing and it's which is a little concerning to me because um I, I have a lot of respect for uh for mckenzie even though i don't know why i should um he's got good stuff yeah, i guess so he's got a whip under one and he gets 25 fantasy points a lot you know yeah uh, yeah so so i'm probably gonna you let discretion be the better part of valor and not really uh actually do it uh but minnesota is showing up as, as something worth playing um but I think McKenzie's good, and I don't think I want to attack him. So I'm probably going to avoid the game. Yeah, I'm okay with uh, – I'm actually – like, it's, it is weird because I think that McKenzie has got great stuff, but he does give up a lot of power. Uh, even in, in spite of that, he's still been really good, even with all the power yeah. he's given up. Um, also, Sonny Gray might be a little like – I mean, I know Cleveland doesn't strike out, and that, that – it's a real thing. They don't strike out much, but – I'm open to always playing the guy who's at like, like 3% when he could just as easily be 30% if it was a different matchup. So maybe you could, maybe you could mix in a tiny bit of, of Sonny Gray. I think a three and a half K prop is a little bit too low for him, by the way. So I like that over bet as well. Um, and I, I'm, I, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to play McKenzie. I'm open to the Minnesota side of at least getting some bats here. You've got Kirilov uh, at 2,500. You've got Larnick. If you wanted to go for a full stack, you could include those guys to make it affordable. You've also got, you know, obviously Kepler Buxton would be the priorities, I think. But I, I could I could see getting to a Minnesota stack on a, on a slate like this because just in hoping that McKinsey has one of his off days. But the, the weird part is even when he does, he still sort of gets there. <laughs> um, he just he hasn't really he doesn't get shelled even in these multiple home run games that he's given up. And because he just strikes out enough guys where, it does, you know, he doesn't really get rocked around as much as you'd think he would. He might. But uh um, yeah, anyway, um, I'm open to nothing. I have really felt like I'm married to so far on today's slate. That's where I'm at right now. 
Um, it is weird to see a team with a 3.8 total and the other pitcher being affordable, Sonny Gray, who's been really good and seeing him at like 3% ownership or 2% ownership. It just doesn't, it's something about it makes me, makes me a little bit intrigued. All right. Milwaukee, St. Louis, uh, sheets. What are you, what are you looking at here? I have this as a, as a complete pass. Um, I'm not getting to any of the pitchers or any of the hitting. Mm-hmm. Um, That's really it. I mean, I, I, it's going to depend on whether the roof's open in Milwaukee today for me. If the roof is open, it's 100 degrees again. I will be happy to play anybody in this game. I actually like the idea of St. Louis at low ownership against Lauer. Um, you know, you throw the lefty out there with all the righties they've got. Lauer's allowed six home runs his last two starts. Uh, definitely can be prone to giving up a lot of home runs. I kind of like St. Louis as a contrarian stack today. Um, so I, I think I, I think I will probably play some of St. Louis. And if the roof's open, I will probably uh, – I will probably consider a lot of the uh, the Brewers on the other side, especially Yelich, uh, Tellez, and uh, Renfro would probably be my favorite three. So I actually, I, I, I just, but again, it's, it's, I, I want the roof open. It's still a good hitter's park anyway, but it's, you know, the, the, the playing, you want to try and attack these heat games. You see what happens. I mean, we had the, even the, the heat wave games yesterday with Atlanta, with the, the Angels, their heat wave. So yeah. I, I'm definitely into both sides of that thing. Um, all right. So what are we doing with Seattle and Oakland today, Sheets? Yeah, so I guess we're playing Kirby. Um, uh, the sixty six hundred seems seems almost like a misprice. Um, don't quite get that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's probably going to be a huge chalk. I imagine. I don't know. Uh, uh, that that's kind of what I want to do. Do you want to do anything else? I'm into the Kirby idea. Um, not overwhelmingly interested in anything else in this game. Uh, I think that Winker's thirty three hundred is a very reasonable price. Uh, I don't mind like a mini stack if you want to get to Seattle, but I think there's just better, better games to target on the slate uh, than this one. So I, I am, on, I am on side I'm on board with the Kirby and I agree with you. I, I think that the early projections are sort of underrating him. And I think he's going to be very popular. Speaking of which, I mean, I, I imagine that the Kirby Otani pairing is going to be mm-hmm. you know, as we go into the next, like, next game, be, be the, be the chalk, you know, and not to mention probably, especially Baltimore might be on the skids, maybe the angels as well. You know what I mean? Being pretty chalky also. So um, Otani makes sense to me. Uh, You know, this remember it's just kind of a split slate today. I mean, you got four games earlier, you know, so it's not that big of a slate and Otani just looks like, I mean, just the pricing is good. Strikeout upside, not a lot to compete with as far as other pitchers on the slate. If you want to know the truth, you know, I mean, there are, but it's not, it's not as if every, anybody's in like a lock spot. So I think that he's uh, that, that, that the Otani Lynch, excuse me, the Otani uh, Kirby pairing is certainly at least to me, the cash game pairing, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, although like, I don't even know what hitting I'm paying up for now that I think about it. Um, mm-hmm. I guess, I guess. I think know, we're down in Boston. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but probably yeah. maybe the angels, you know, so um I would play the Angels. I have them as one of my one of my better stacks as well, and uh, and Otani. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, I get it. It'll feel funny to me to like the uh, Casey doesn't strike out a ton. They tend to chase early, especially against strikeout pitchers, and I'm okay with it. I I, I always look for reasons to fade Otani and and try and play the other side on small slates. And I don't think I'm going to do that tonight, but. <sighs> I'm sort of wondering why not? Like, there's nothing, there's not a whole lot that I'm completely in love with. I like the St. Louis contrarian play a, a little bit. Just keep uh, in mind, by the way, you might have no uh, Perez tonight. No Perez for, oh, that's no Salvador. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he got, he, he hurt his thumb in the middle of an at-bat. Yeah, 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 that's right. Uh, that's all right. I love Melendez too. So, yeah. but I, I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to do it. I think, I, I think I am going to, I think the natural pairing for me is some combination of Otani, Kirby, and Scooble actually I think Scooble is a really good pivot off of these guys and Mm -hmm. um just 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 because I think you get you're getting low ownership on a guy who I could see I don't think that Otani wins the slate that much more than Scooble does and I think you're going to see five times the ownership on Otani I think I could play um I think you could also play Montgomery as as could pivot off of all that stuff yeah and he's and he's not in direct competition for the um that price price range either um mm-hmm. i like the scoobal idea though i like maybe scoobal and 
How about how about how about, about anti game stack thing? How about how about Scuba Waka for for all the pivot? You know what I mean? Like yeah, that's interesting. When's the last time you, you anti game stack game in Fenway? I don't know. It's, that's tough. But yeah, but I mean, it's, I mean, Detroit's only got a three point seven run total. Fenway is actually one of the worst hitting conditions on the slate. Um, it is Fenway, so it's obviously they get a boost for that. But they, it, it's cooler there. It, it's warm everywhere else. So. Um, I'm, I'm interested in, like I, like I said before, I'm interested in the Pittsburgh value. I've, I don't know how much you're going to need it, but again, they keep sort of, they've been getting there anyway. So I think they're very interesting. I think that I, I'm very interested in the contrarian St. Louis stack. And then I'm very open to, to, to playing. I want parts of that Atlanta San Francisco game. And I, I think I might side a little bit more with San Francisco uh, personally, but uh, certainly you, you, know, you, you would play that you play the hitters for San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. I said it yesterday against Strider. It's why would I fade away against Morton? Who hit that home run in the first inning was the nine hitter, right? Yeah. Wins. Austin wins. Yeah. Um, that, that's the only problem I have with San Francisco is that they, they, uh, Peterson hit home run too. Um, but they tend to get there by a lot of hits. That's what <laughs> I mean. Know? Yeah. And, and they also, they all get pinch hit for, so it's a little tough to play them sometimes, but I just want to attack the weather spot. Um, and yeah. you know it's warm. It's warm a few places tonight, and that's that's one of the the better hitting parks anyway when it when it's warm. So I definitely have some interest there, and it's pretty warm in, in Pittsburgh with wind blowing out as well. So I think both sides of the Pittsburgh. I think the Cubs are going to end up being the Cubs, and some of the Angels are going to be chalk. It feels weird to stack the Angels when you can't play Otani for me, especially after he just hit two home runs yesterday. <laughs> um, but I think you're going to see a lot on Baltimore, Boston, LA. Chicago, that's probably. Well, I mean, if you if you could play the Otani Kirby, I mean, you, you, people could, then you could play literally whoever you want, you know. Um, yeah. So you might you might get like all those Boston guys played, you know what I mean? Yep. And yep. and the Angels. I mean, Tra I think Trout could be like fifty percent on tonight. I think that's very possible. <laughs> I really, I would, I would, I would probably have to just fade that just based on I can't play a guy. Just on just on the hashtag at baseball. Right? Yeah, so. exactly. Unless I was doing some sort of a weird. Uh, you know, you know, it's funny, you know, you were talking about that. I, I, I wanted to bring this up because um, I saw it happen. Um, we talk, I was as we talk about the school and the locker thing. So I, I have it's so weird. Like I, I've I have never seen anybody hit the ball as far as that one particular player did like two years ago. OK. And granted, it was in course, whatever. But this guy hit three home runs, one of them with one hand, like 500 feet. It was like freaking crazy. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen anything like it until last night when the same guy did it in, in, at Fenway. Dude, Trevor Story hitting oh. sixth must have hit the ball 5,000 feet. Oh he like hit God, it literally over the freaking stadium at freaking Fenway. I mean, like uh, when, when, they, when they brought him to Fenway, this is exactly what he's getting paid for. You know what right. I mean? It's that, that exact thing. And he right. just crushed that thing. That was crazy. Yeah, he's um that that his problem is though he's always swinging for that. That's why I always yeah, yeah. he strikes out so many times. Yeah. Um. Anyway, all right. Well, good luck with everybody. I don't think I'm going to be around for live. I will try to get out whatever information in the Discord I can. Um. Sheets. Anything else before we get out of here? No, but I'm glad we got through this. So now you can do a golf thing with me. Yeah. All right. Good luck, everybody.